Hey, hi, it's Meredith. I'm here with our message for Tuesday, the 16th of March, 2021. We're using Bonefire Tarot for our message today. Our cards from the bottom of the deck, these are all about the energy atmosphere, what's unfolding there for us today. And our first card is the King of Coins, King of Pentacles. I like this. We had the Knight of Pentacles in yesterday's reading. So good, steady, reliable movement to the energy flow. And that has even more mastery woven into it today. So we're with the King because we're, uh, I feel we're in a great flow of upgrade with our, or expansiveness with our intuitive gifts. So coming with, we have the Four of Swords. Yeah, this is nice because this is a relaxed energy. This is rest, relaxation for the spiritual warrior. This is a card about preparation for what comes next. And next to the King of Pentacles, <laughs> who always has his eye on what's becoming, what's blossoming, what's in the oncoming while simultaneously celebrating what's in the now, there's this rest, relaxation, preparedness going on. So it's a great combination. You have a very steady, stable, reliable character in the King of Coins. At ease, relaxation, patience, calm, and preparation in the Four of Swords. Coming with, <laughs> look at that, because there's a lot of momentum in the atmosphere for us today. That's the Eight of Wands and... This is swift moving energy. It's swift moving energy, which at times can be unstable, fiery, passionate, yet it has the king mixed into it, the king of coins, the most grounded of them all. So this is very stable momentum in the energy atmosphere for us today. So you can rely on the interactions that are unfolding. This is very... Uh, the atmosphere is charged with stability. We are charged with stability. We are reliable. The people that we are interacting with are reliable, consistent, steady as well. So this is quite a blessing. And I feel as though these cards let us know that we can make a lot of progress in our endeavors today. Next, we have, look at this, another eight. We have the eight of cups. More momentum, more movement. So we've got fire, creativity, passion. Also, you know, the Eight of Wands is a super stable card because that's like doubling the Four of Wands, super stable foundation, right? Then we have the Eight of Cups. Now this is stability within our emotional and feeling realm. Mm. This doesn't get spoken of very often when it comes to the Suit of Cups and most especially the Eight of Cups. Traditionally, what I hear as a tarot reader, listening to other tarot readers on YouTube, I have a handful of my favorites. I love them. I'm not dissing any of them, but almost every single one of them speaks to the Eight of Cups in such a way that uh, we're leaving someone behind or someone is leaving our life. And it's spoken of in a way that's sort of... Mm, in the realm of Three of Swords, like heartbreak and sorrow. And I don't feel that at all when it comes to the Eight of Cups. As a matter of fact, I feel a whole lot more connected to the fact that this card has relationship to Eclipse energy. You almost always see the sun and the moon together in the card. This one's no exception, there it is. <laughs> and there's a message about the Eight of Cups that we're moving from really good circumstances to even better circumstances. So let's back that up just a little bit. We have great momentum, swift moving energy in the Eight of Wands over here, really stable foundation because we have this four, this king, and these two eights, a lot of stability. So stability in the fiery, passionate, creative realm, stability in the earthly, grounded realm, and then stability yet again in the emotional feeling realm. So I ask you, where in any of that are we going off the rails emotionally <laughs> and creating sorrow or pain or loss or departure from anything? It feels to me as though the... 
the flow of upgrade in our lives just continues to blossom with these cards present. Now, the Eight of Cups also brings us a message of reflection on the most recent eclipses and preparation, Four of Swords, for any oncoming eclipses in, in our near future. And I don't have my Moon Diary out, so I can't tell you when those are just now, but you might want to check it out for yourself. The eclipse energy stays with us anywhere from 6 to 18 months, right? So we may be finding ourselves in a situation where we have some emotions or feelings bubbling up that are related to the most recent eclipses. So just go back a little bit in your own moon diaries and check out where you were at the last eclipse and, and you know, have a gander at it and look at the progress that you've made. Let's see what comes with our eight. <laughs> the two of cups. This is a return now from yesterday's reading as well. There's a unifying energy going on here and I feel it in our Eight of Wands. In Ancient Tarot, as I've told you so often, this is a marriage card. So this is a weaving together of energies, a unifying of forces, so to speak. And we had the Two of Cups in yesterday's reading. <clears throat> Pardon. And in Bonefire, one of the things I love about the Two of Cups is that the couple on the card are embracing. In most tarot cards, you will see the Two of Cups uh, where the, the pair on the card are not actually touching. They're extending cups to one another, but not even the cups are touching, as in a toast or a cheers of some sort. It's always implied that it's about to happen, but here in Bonefire, it's happened. We've embraced, right? So now add your two to the eight. What do you get? The 10 of cups. This is what's blossoming. This is what is growing. This is what's on the vine for us, and that's exactly what the king of coins is in consideration of. He's going to celebrate the love, the joy, the bliss, the happiness of now and what's right here in front of us, but he's also going to uh, celebrate and enjoy the bliss and happiness of what's becoming, and that's such a beautiful message of the king of coins, and the fact that he is the most steady, the most reliable, the most stable of all the kings uh, strengthens this message for us. Mm. Let's see what's next. <laughs> I love this. So we have the moon. Yesterday, I think we had the high priestess. Mm, maybe she was up top. But uh, anyway, this is the expansion on our intuitive wisdom. When we see the moon, we have a different lens from which to look at things through. We have a different kind of perspective. And I feel that that reveals itself to us in all of this swift moving energy. And we're able to see it in that momentum because of our own stable, peaceful, restful, relaxed nature at this time. And the way we're journeying Eight of Cups uh, on our path. Hmm. And then let's just stabilize this reading a little bit more with the Emperor. Now, here's a character who's been with us really steady. I think he showed up every day in the readings last week or the week before. I'm having a little trouble keeping track of time in that regard. But the Emperor has been showing up frequently. We can say that with authority. And here he is with his wisdom and his experience and his generosity of spirit and his truly expansive sense of soulful spiritual self right next to the moon. Uh, so the moon gives us a completely different perspective and we are engaging that perspective through our wisdom, through our experience within this momentum and simultaneously witnessing it, how our energies are unifying within self-relationship how they are stable within self-relationship and how they are unifying, expanding, growing, the bond growing stronger within our most prominent relationships. So look to your family, your friends, your family of friends, and of course, beloved relationship as well. You're going to see a stability and a strength that just gives you the wow factor there. And you can pat yourself on the back because 
that's all due to your own inner journey work. You embracing the emperor. You embracing the king of coins within self. Yeah. Next we have <laughs> the lovers. You know, like yesterday, there's just a whole lot of major arcana on the table. There's three of them right in a row here. So we have the lovers and then we have the seven of coins. The seven of coins has become <laughs> one of my favorite cards in tarot. And it used to be one of my biggest eye roller. Oh, goodness, no, not the seven of coins. That was my attitude toward this card. And that has slowly shifted and has turned into one of my favorite cards. And why is that? Because this card confirms our king of coins beautifully. This is all about the harvest that is on the vine. It's not quite ripe. It's not quite ready. But it's there. It's in the blossoming. It's in the oncoming. And that's exactly what the King of Coins is looking at. So it's beautiful that he's our first card. And this is our last card in the tarot section of the reading. And the Seven of Coins is also another one of those Heaven Touches Earth Within the Self cards. Because it is a seven. That's the message of seven in tarot. Heaven Touching Earth Within. So... We have bounty, we have abundance, we have harvest. It's all there on the vine, not quite ready to pick, but it is, it's coming to us. And it's not as though we are without harvest. We have great celebration over here with the eight and the two and an abundance of intuitive wisdom flowing our way through our emperor and king of coins like nature. And we're processing all of that in a relaxed, calm, prepared way and staying in flow with the momentum that's on offer to us. So hallelujah, folks. That's an awesome message right there for us. <laughs> Celebrate the heck out of that. Mm. Now, the lover's card, you know, the lover's is all about choice. And yes, it is about relationship. I will grant you that as well. You have the two of cups. And you have the lovers. You cannot ignore that this is about a connection between beloveds, between soulmates, between twin flames. You know, though, that we discuss it always, first and foremost, as relationship to self. So when you look at these cards, you can know and you can see your value and what you have to offer all of your relationships. It's of an emperor-like quality. Isn't that fantastic? And wherever you go, you are bringing your own essence of heaven on earth within self. And that's what you have to share in all of your relationships. So this flow of upgraded energy that I continue to feel within our intuitive awareness, uh, within the practicalities of everyday life, we have a whole lot to bring to the table. And we're bringing it without hesitation. And everybody is benefiting from the harvest, the bounty, the fruitfulness of our soulful beings. <laughs> and we're receiving that in return because we are connecting with, communicating with people of similar frequency, similar vibration, right? So what we're giving out is coming back to us. So it's a party, people. <laughs> it's a happiness party. All right, let's go on to... Angel Answers, this is your opportunity to ask a question of the cards, if you have one, personal to you. They are falling out of the deck. And our first one is, you're ready. Yeah, you're ready. You know you're ready. That's why the Eight of Wands is there. You're not only ready, but your, your rocket is lit. <laughs> Just take off. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, how nice. And once you get going, don't stop. <laughs> Emphatically, don't stop. <laughs> Next. I love these cards. I hope you all enjoy them as much as I do. <clears throat> what else do we have? Jumping out of the deck for us. Emphatic success. Hmm, you ready? Don't stop. Success. That's beautiful. One more card. Ooh, a repeat from yesterday. Communicate clearly. Yeah, and I don't sense that that's really an issue at this time. If we were still in retrograde, I might say it was, but 
the communicate clearly card it's loaded for me as i look at it it's encouragement for us to be really great listeners to what's being said but also what's not being said ask questions if you don't understand something and invite questions to other people so that they fully understand what you are expressing all right and now our affirmation from the spirit junkie deck <laughs> this is so sweet as i'm just talking to you about how uh, upgraded frequency vibration right my high vibe thoughts create health in my body, peace in my mind, and love in my heart. Yeah, great confirmation of everything that we have to offer, every exchange and interaction in our world, and then what comes back to us. How sweet is that? Thank you everyone, as always, for watching. Do hit the thumbs up, like the video, it circulates them on YouTube. That's very appreciated by me. Have a beautiful day, everyone. You know Tuesday is my favorite day of the week. Peace, love, joy, happiness to each and every one of you. Bye for now and namaste.